Hi guys, this is a video following on from my rulers of England and I am now up to Queen Victoria and in this video I'm basically just going to be talking about Queen Victoria as she was um, the ruler for the majority of the 19th century. I'll also show you how I got this makeup look inspired by the Victorian era and I'm also going to be talking about the fashion from the 19th century. Fashion changed a lot throughout the 19th century. Gowns in the first half of the century had big sleeve plumpers to make these big puffy sleeves and on top of the gown women would wear a pelerine. These gowns would be decorated with bows, ribbons, flowers and the women's hairstyle of this part of the century would also be decorated with flowers, bows and ribbons. Big bonnets which came right out were also worn. In the 1840s women wore another style of dress. This was draped tightly around the body with tight sleeves and the dress was longer in length. In the 1850s women wore cage crinolines. These brought the dress right out. The shape of these crinolines changed later to a elliptical crinoline which just brought the back of the dress out. In the late 1800s we see the bustle. A bustle is a padded undergarment used to add fullness at the back of a woman's dress. In the 1890s we start to see women wearing suits and what was also seen on every outfit was the leg of mutton sleeves. This is a sleeve with four knits at the top. Unlike women's wear, men's wear didn't really change a lot through this century. They basically wore a frock coat, trousers and a top hat. The outfit I'm wearing today I suppose is more of a modern take on Victorian wear. Unfortunately I don't have anything um, that close to an authentic Victorian look. I really wanted to find a dress with those leg and mutton sleeves but I just couldn't find uh, a dress like that anywhere. If you've ever seen the film Crimson Peak with Tom Hiddleston um, there's a dress on that movie which I really like. Uh, it's a mustard coloured dress and I can't remember the actress's name but I'll show you a picture of the dress but it's got these really big Lego mutton sleeves and for some reason I just really like the look of this dress. I did try and put like um, socks up the top of this dress to try and give that mutton, leg of mutton effect but I did look a little silly but um, when I took pictures of this outfit to make it look a bit more um, Victorian I used the socks for the pictures but I couldn't keep them in because I just looked too silly. This top it's made from a kind of netted material and it's got a high collar and I got this from Primark and I'm also wearing this long black skirt it's not as long as I wanted it to be I ideally wanted a black skirt that reached the floor but this was the longest black skirt I had. Now I'm going to show you how I got this no makeup makeup look inspired by the Victorian era. First of all I'm using my Kat Von D loose powder and I'm just applying this all over my face. Makeup was frowned upon in the Victorian era so not many people wore makeup or if they did they would use very little so it appeared as if they weren't wearing any makeup so I won't be applying a lot of makeup for this look. They still preferred a more paler white complexion which is why I'm using this um, white powder. Brows were usually very thin in the Victorian era so I'm just brushing down my brows to try and make them appear thinner and I'm also filling them in slightly to make them darker. For this I'm using my Brow Envy Kit from Too Faced. Eyeshadows were rarely used in the Victorian era but I'm just very lightly applying black eyeshadow along my upper lash line just to make my eyes appear a bit darker. Now I'm just applying a bit of mascara. Having darker facial hair was deemed more attractive in the Victorian era so a lot of women would darken their eyebrows and eyelashes, especially women with fairer hair. Rouge was used in the Victorian era, so I'm just applying this pink cream blush from Max Factor softly to my cheeks.
Now I'm applying this strawberry lip balm from Nivea that has a red tint to it. Lip stains were often added to the lips in the Victorian era. And that completes this 19th century inspired makeup look. Now I'm going to talk about Queen Victoria, who was the queen in the 19th century. She wasn't the only monarch who ruled during the 19th century. George III, uh, George IV and William IV all ruled in the first half of the, well, um, from until 1837, which uh, began the reign of Queen Victoria. But I've already talked about them in my uh, more Georgian um, video. I don't know what I'm saying right now. Uh, so yeah, basically this video I'm only going to be talking about Queen Victoria who ruled from 1837 to 1901. Victoria became queen after the death of her uncle King William IV who had no legitimate children. Victoria was the only child of Princess Victoria of Saxe-Coburg and Edward Duke of Kent who was the fourth son of George III and the brother of King George IV and King William IV. Her father died when she was one year old and her mother kept her away from her uncles to have a sheltered upbringing. Victoria inherited the throne in 1837. She was only 18 years old and was now one of the most powerful people in not just Britain but the world. The British Empire was at the height of power and Victoria didn't just rule over Britain, she ruled over one quarter of the world's population. The British Empire stretched around the globe from India, Canada, the Caribbean, Africa, South America, Australia and New Zealand. In February 1840, Victoria married her cousin Prince Albert of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha. He was a love of Victoria's life. They did everything together. They had nine children and Prince Albert had a tremendous influence over the Queen. He was Victoria's main advisor. Prince Albert was effectively the ruler of the country. He was the main back of the 1851 Great Expedition. This was the first World's Fair with exhibits from most of the world's nations. Prince Albert also persuaded Victoria to leave a lot of the ruling of the nation and empire to Parliament. Albert died from typhoid in 1861 and Victoria went into deep mourning. She withdrew almost completely from public life, spending most of her time at Balmoral Castle in Scotland with her favourite servant, John Brown, but she refused her son Edward any active role in running the country. In 1876, the Queen became Empress of India, the jewel in the crown, and in 1887, she celebrated her Golden Jubilee and then Diamond Jubilee in 1897. And her reign lasted 63 years and 7 months, which is the second longest of any British monarch. Her eldest son then became Edward VII. The Victorian era was a time of immense industrial, political, trade, scientific and military progress for Great Britain. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.